I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna be a better basketball player than you. And that's all that mattered. Mm -hmm. And the best basketball players on the best basketball team won, not who jumps the highest, who has the longest wingspan won. That that's of no value. Mm -hmm. So when I when I am an old school guy, my dad's an old school player. So mm -hmm. when he brings me tape to that, that's what I reference my game to. I don't mm -hmm. I'm not all for the metrics. I'm just I'm just off to put the ball in the basket mm -hmm. and get guys involved. That's that's what I'm about. What does the success that you have had on each level that you've been on? How much does this drive you, motivate you? Yeah. Has success, but you still got to play. I just want an opportunity. I could, I could care less if people think I performed well here or, mm -hmm. or didn't. If I know, if I, I know what I can do in a game. Okay, I'm a, I, I play, I'm a on the court, mm -hmm. basketball on hands kind of guy. So if I get a basketball, I'm going to perform. And I, a lot of people can't say that they can. They can uh, look well, show well, but a lot of people can't play the game well. Now, who were some of the teams that you, who were the teams that you spoke to while you were here? I spoke to Boston. I spoke to uh, Phoenix. I spoke to uh, Boston, Phoenix, Portland. I spoke to Memphis and the Lakers. Okay, well, were, how were these teams talking about they were going to utilize? Um, I mean, they they asked me what position you know, they think I would fit best at or where I would fit best at, and. I, I told him I, I can play the lead guard if you want me to, and or I can score the ball on the wing like a Lou Williams or a Monte, that was if or Iverson if, if they would like me to. But I I can do both, so it's it's wherever they want to put me at, and I'm good at adapting, and I don't mind adapting. Thanks, man. No Your pace in Louisville seems to fit you for the NBA level, both offensively and right. defensively. How much is that going to help you? It's going to help me a lot. I'm I'm in tip top shape. I'm a guy who works who works hard. He's always in the gym, who improves everything. So when it's time for me to make a transition, it won't be too difficult. You've proven yourself on both ends. Right. Both yeah. Ends and ends. Uh, yeah, I, I take pride on the defense, and a lot of guards don't do that. A lot of guards don't take pride in playing defense, and, and that's what I do. Uh, my job is to is to outplay my opponent on the, on the offensive end and make and shut him down on the defensive end. And I think this year, along with last year, whoever I've matched up against, I, I probably outplayed them. Once Peyton left last year, you got more than point guard role underneath your belt. How much did that help you too to prove that the team to handle that spot? That helped me a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of out, of out of a lot of the guards here, I, I averaged just the same amount of assists, or per 40 minutes, I probably averaged the most. And and I've had games where I've just decided to get 13 assists or 11 assists, 12 assists, and it and it's, it's fairly easy. I, I played 22 minutes a game, had seven assists. It's it's not hard for me to get assists at all. I'm showing off your athleticism. You had a couple of pretty crazy dunks this year. Uh, how much has that helped you? I mean, obviously you're a point guard, but to have that sort of you know, it, jump at the rim. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an, it's an explosion. A lot of people could just jump and just jump freely, but a lot of people can't do a move and, and explode off off a move or explode off a pick and roll or in an in game situation with adrenaline. A lot of people don't know how to how to bounce that and, and explode to the rim, and I, I tend to, to do all of it. How much did the staying extra help you? It helped me a lot. It gave me court awareness, and and I figured out where my teammates were. I figured out what what's good shots and what's bad shots to take. I realized the shots that I needed to take that I could shoot a higher percentage. I knew the shots that I didn't feel super comfortable with, but I can knock down. But I didn't let my ego get in the way of taking a bad shot. I just decided, you know, if it's not a layup or, or a floater, then I won't take it. I'll just look to kick it out because that's when I'm 90% at it. I know there was the game winner you hit in Cincinnati. And there seems to be just kind of a coolness you have in the last few minutes. What has brought that that you don't ever really panic, that you got that kind of, you know, I got this kind of mentality down the stretch? No, just the, just the, I'm a one-on-one -on -one player and I can get a shot off at any time. So if it's an end of the game situation, I know I can get a shot off. And and this year when things were down the stretch, maybe SMU or even SMU at home or even a, like a Houston or even against a, a team like UConn, I, I have a tendency to just kind of raise my confidence level and I'm not afraid to make a mistake. Coach Patino said, once other guards find out if they're working out with you, they're gonna probably try to ask out yeah. because you're gonna pop them down. <laughs> What, what's your relationship been like with him? Because he's uh, he's hard on guards. Yeah, he he gave me a lot of my dad put me toughness and fierceness, yeah. but Coach P kind of made me elevate that and take it to another level. My dad instilled the competitiveness in me, and now I can go out and I don't 
I don't care about what anyone has ever did, or I don't care if anybody's six five or six four. I'll, I'll I'll fight it out. If you want to play physical, I'm strong. I'll play physical. If you want to play soft, I'll take advantage of you, and that's the way I am.